Hello again, and welcome to today's webinar. Um, on behalf of the National Transit Institute, I welcome you and thank you for participating. The National Transit Institute develops, promotes, and delivers training and education programs for the public transit industry in the United States. Today's webinar is based on NTD annual reporting for subrecipients sub report year 2019. We are pleased to have as our presenters today, Bailey Krauss and Courtney Springer. Bailey Krauss joined the NTD team in 2014. She is a graduate of Michigan State University and currently serves as the validation manager for the National Transit Database Rural Reporting Schedule. Courtney Springer joined the NTD team in 2015. She is a graduate of the University of Virginia and currently serves as a senior, senior validation analyst for the rural reporting module of the National Transit Database. <clears throat> For today's webinar, uh, the presentation will consist of uh, Bailey and Courtney presenting their material um, with questions and answers throughout. If possible, um, they will be answered throughout by typing them in the Q&A box. If you don't see the Q&A box, you should make your uh, screen menu show up if it's not already there. And there's a box on there that says Q&A. If you make that pop out, then you can type your questions in there. Any questions that aren't answered will be uh, moderated at the end of the presentation. Um, if you don't already have a copy of the handouts, I pasted a handy dandy link to download them in the chat box. Hopefully everyone can see that. And I guess without any further ado, I will turn the presentation over to Bailey and Courtney. Thank you, Laurie, and thank you everyone for joining us today for the 2019 subrecipient training presentation. There's a lot of material to cover, so we're just gonna jump right in. If you do have any questions, please utilize the chat feature or the Q&A feature, as Lori mentioned, for questions as you may have as we go through the presentation. All right, con our contact information from the National Transit Database is found here for our help desk. As subrecipients, however, you should first reach out to your contact at your state and they will therefore reach out to the appropriate parties via the state's validation analyst or the help desk. Again, my name is Bailey Krauss and I'm the Rural Validation Manager here and have been working with states and tribes for going on six report years and I am joined by Courtney Springer who will pop in about halfway through the presentation and start talking. So you will hear a changeover and it might take us a moment or two to you know, start, start back up. All right, so today we'll cover the following subjects. NTD overview, 2019 changes and clarifications, NTD fundamentals, interface review and user management, reporting forms, common reporting challenges, subrecipients face, and the validation and close-up process. First, the overview. NTD was established to be the nation's primary source for information and stats on all public transit modes of the U.S. It's a source of data for performance measurement benchmarking as well as research. So who's reporting? Uh, recipients and subrecipients of Chapter 53 funds report to the NTD. Subrecipients of State 5311 forms report data through their state report. Uh, you may be comprised of those that have received funding in the past and are still required to report on based on uh, continuing grant requirements, or those that receive, wish to receive it in the future and will report voluntarily. So why do you report? 5311 subrecipients and recipients are required to report due to grant requirements as stated here in section 5335. As I mentioned before, data from the NTD is used in multiple ways, such as performance benchmarking, research and statistics programs, and formula apportionment. The data is used to put, it's entered use these ways. Um, we do receive a lot of questions from you know, different agencies as well as different um, media sources reaching out for information. All right, so data from the NTD is due on the following dates, October 31st, January 31st, in Oct I'm sorry, April 30th. However, if you are a self-reporting subrecipient, your state may have different internal deadlines so that they can review the data you entered as well as any validation that you responded to. So you may have about a two week or one week gap between when the due date is for the NTD report to their analysts versus when you have to have your report into your state. All right, so with that aside, we'll now go into the 2019 changes and clarifications that may affect your agency. The first clarification concerns evacuation and disaster service. 
If your agency provides services in response to a national disaster, or natural disaster, I apologize, or as part of, the, as part of an evacuation effort, it is not reportable as public transit. If you do provide these services, please do not include the financial or service data as part of your NTD report. Next up is clarification on transportation network companies, or TNCs. If your agency is reporting to the NTD and is contracting with a TNC or on-demand service, if the service is considered public transit, you must include data for this service in your NTD report. As mentioned on the slide, the contract between your agency and the TNC must meet the criteria for purchase transportation as defined in the NTD policy manual. And we will be going over what purchase transportation means in a few minutes. Switching gears over to reporting clarifications, there are a few A15 clarifications. So the A15 is where you will report the expanded asset module facilities and condition assessments. Um, so this is the new form that was introduced actually two report years uh, ago. However, it was due for the first year last year as a requirement. Um, so for this, passenger stations no longer need to be enclosed buildings to be reported, but rather it can be a significant structure. Uh, descriptions of the facility types have been updated in the policy manual to provide further clarity. Uh, when I say passenger stations, I'm not meaning a bus stop with a bench and an overhang. It, it needs to be more of a significant structure on that. Following up on the last clarification for RY19, you may report a condition assessment date past the fiscal year end date of your agency, but before the due date of your report. So, for example, if your fiscal year end date is 6.30 and your due date is that October 31st, uh, you may report a condition assessment date of October 5th for report year 2019. So this will change in report year 2020, and you will be required to report a condition assessment date within your fiscal year to align with the TAM plan. Next on the A15 clarification list, um, there's a couple more of these, so A15 is a hot topic. Um, transit agencies are required to inventory all passenger facilities used in revenue service, whether or not the agency has capital responsibility for them. These will include passenger station or passenger parking facilities, this is something that was we, we tried to clarify throughout the year last year, but we really wanted to make sure that everyone understood passenger parking facilities need to be on the E15 regardless of whether or not your agency has that capital responsibility. Go over what capital responsibility means and the NTD um, definitions coming up in a little bit. Great. So the facility type, ferry boat terminal, is now an option on the A15. If you have any of these, and it was reported as something else last year, as like a stopgap, please make sure to update it to the correct type this year. Um, that will just be on the drop-down menu of that A15. All right, keep rolling with the A15 updates and clarify that incidentally used admin or maintenance facilities do not need to be inventoried on the A15. It was clarified that incidental use is when less than 50 or 50 or less 50% or less of the facility's physical space is dedicated to the provision of public transit. You can also look at it as if you have a certain percentage of revenue vehicles that use the facility compared to the public works vehicles that may use the same facility. If it's less than 50% of your revenue vehicles compared to the public works vehicles, um, then you wouldn't have to report it. But if you do have any questions or if you need any clarification on that, please feel free to reach out to your state. The state will reach out to the analysts if they have any further questions. All right, and the last A15 update is again regarding condition assessment. A condition assessment is not required for a facility until the construction is complete. So if a facility, or I'm sorry, if an agency is use, still using the facility during construction, you will still inventory it. But if it is not being used in revenue service, please let, leave off the A15. So basically your asset form should reflect what assets you are using in revenue service or used for the provision of revenue service. So that would mean service vehicles, your facilities, or your actual revenue. So we're just looking at what is being used in revenue service, what is being used to assist in providing that revenue service. All right, so next is a change to the A30, which is the addition of a checkbox for if a vehicle is autonomous. This is defined as a vehicle capable of performing all driving functions without human input under certain conditions. So really what we're looking here, looking for here are those uh, people movers. Um, things of that nature are usually autonomous. 
Um, if you believe you do have something autonomous, please just mark off this checkbox. As you can see here, there's a little checkbox. Um, and your analyst will probably just follow up, say, please confirm, because since it is not expected to have a lot in the rural area, we just really want to make sure we're getting the correct information this year. All right, so for the A35 form for service vehicles, which are those not used in revenue service, um, but used to assist in the provision of revenue service, the clarification is that if you do use service vehicles that are pulled from a pool of vehicles, such as your public works vehicles, you should report a representative sample of the fleets um, that usually support that mode or modes that you have. So this will work like the requirement to report non-dedicated revenue vehicles on the A30 where you're just reporting a representative uh, fleet. So whatever vehicles you actually do use, mostly those are the ones that you would report on the A35. And another service vehicle clarification is about the intent of the estimated cost field on the A35. This is to capture the cost of a comparable fleet and it should reflect the current asset type and allow for moderate increases in cost due to the inflation or improvements in technology. So we're just basically looking at a vehicle. How much is it going to cost to replace it at the time that you have that date for? So if it's now, how much would it cost to replace? Um, if it's brand new, what would that cost be? Okay, last clarification for this year regards the service vehicle de description. It was updated for clarity and it's on the slide. Uh, description breaks down the vehicle must be self-propelled self and either roadworthy or a piece of major construction equipment. So we're talking about no forklifts, golf carts, vehicles like that. We're just trying to make it a little bit clearer what we're expecting here. All right, so now we're going to jump into a review of the NTD fundamentals. So we're going to cover modes types of service, revenue service definitions, and an overview of financial information. So first, uh, what is reported to the NTD? So public transportation is. Public transportation is defined as regular con continuing shared ride service transportation services that are open to the general public or open to a segment of the general public as defined by age, disability, or low income. So once you determine whether or not your service is public, the next step is to determine what the mode is that you should be reporting is. I've included the two most popular rural modes in this slide. Bus service is powered by a motor and fuel contained within a vehicle. So that will include those that have route deviation, point deviation, um, as well as just a fixed route. Uh, demand response service is defined as service scheduled in response to calls from passengers, like a dialer ride. Another popular mode in the rural module is the computer bus mode. So we do receive many questions on what is considered commuter bus service versus bus service. And to clarify, commuter bus operates with more than five miles of closed door service, and the same type of vehicles are consistently operated on the service. If you think you have both bus and commuter bus services, please keep in mind that the vehicle shouldn't be used between the services on the same day, and the driver's work assignment should be separate as well. Um, if you are currently reporting both commuter bus and bus service and should only report one mode, please let your state DOT contact know, or if you think you're reporting only one mode, you should be reporting two, same deal, um, contact your state DOT so we can you know, get that updated. All right, so after modes, the next topic we're, we're going to cover really briefly is going to be the types of service. So currently in NTD, there are two types of service directly operating and purchase transportation. So directly operated is when the service is operated by the agency and uses the agency's employees. So exactly what it states, you're directly operating that mode. Uh, purchase transportation is when the vehicles are operated by the seller's employees, the service is brand branded as the buyer's and the buyer is paying the full cost of the service. This is just a very, very brief breakdown of what purchase transportation is. There are a couple more points that are included. However, this is just the main sticking points of every time we see purchase transportation, this is what we're heavily looking at. After the mode and type of service is determined, what data should you be reporting for these services? Well, some of the specific data points are shown here, as well as the abbreviations that are used throughout this presentation, as well as the report. These data points are collected on a per mode and type of service basis, except for the sponsored unlinked passenger trips, which are collected by the demand response mode types only. So the first data points I'd like to discuss are vehicle revenue miles and vehicle revenue hours. So we're going to be talking about, a lot about revenue service. You've heard me talk about revenue service the last couple slides, so what does it mean? 
Revenue service is when the vehicles are transporting passengers or, or are able to transport passengers. So this will include layover and recovery time for buses. Um, revenue service does not include deadhead, driver training, school bus or charter services, and vehicle maintenance. So if you know one of the maintenance guys is going and testing the vehicle, that is not revenue service. Same thing with school or um, charter services. Any driver training, if they're out on the bus, there's no expectation of picking up any passengers. Same deal would not be counted in your in your revenue service. As I mentioned in the previous slide, deadhead is not reportable in your revenue service. So deadhead would include leaving or returning to the garage or yard facility, changing routes, or when there is no expectation of carrying passengers. There are detailed tables found with the NTD policy manual, which further clarify what is considered revenue service in, in each mode. So we wanted to include these for just easy access. So if you did download the, the uh, the PowerPoint, this will be a very easy tool for you to review without having to go through the policy manual, but they definitely are in there. Uh, same exact language should be there, so it shouldn't be anything too surprising for you. Um, here. So this is for the demand response mode. And please note that when the vehicle is dispatched from the garage to pick up a passenger, it is not revenue service. And if they drop off the last passenger and go back to the dispatching point, it's also not considered revenue service. But if they're going from picking up a passenger, dropping them off, going to the next passenger, picking them up, dropping them off. The time between passenger one, passenger two would be considered revenue service. Um, as it states, I believe it's like the fourth one down. So yes and yes for revenue hours and revenue miles. All right, so that's demand response. So on to bus routes. So this is just a rundown of what is and what is not considered revenue service for bus mode. So this uh, will, very closely follow um, commuter bus mode as well. So commuter bus, motor bus, more or less have the same exact rules for what is considered, what is not considered revenue service. Again, keep in mind when the bus is dispatched from the garage to the first stop, not revenue service, and then the last stop back to the dispatching point, not revenue service. So a lot of it between, sure, great, is, but anything at the end, beginning, usually is not. But if you do have any like specific questions about it, ask questions away. All right. So since we've covered the revenue service of the miles and hours, the next big point that we review is unlinked passenger trips. So when reporting unlinked passenger trips, these are when people board the vehicle, no matter how many vehicles they use from the origin to destination. So if they're taking multiple routes on multiple buses, count the person each time they board that vehicle. Um, so only passenger trips on the form itself if you are a self-reporting uh, subrecipient. You will report the total amount of passengers, regardless of whether or not they're class clarified or classified as a regular or a sponsor trip. You just report 100% of everything. And I'm sure I'm going to go over this probably two more times. I think Courtney goes over it one or two more times. It's a huge sticking point with us. So only passenger trips when you report them are regular plus sponsor trips. All right. So. I talked about sponsor trips. What are they? Uh, they are part of the unlinked passenger trip number being reported and are paid in part or in full by a third party. So these may be part of a, human, a coordinated human services transportation plan. Uh, common sponsors are the VA, Medicare, and assisted living centers. Um, so if they are sponsored in part and in whole, you're going to pop them over to the sponsored unlinked passenger trip, make sure they're still included in that revenue, or I'm sorry, the unlinked passenger trip total number. And you'll get a little um, screenshot of exactly how that looks in the system, so it's not just, you know, hypothetical for you. All right, so another point that you will, or data point that you have to report by mode type of service is BOMS. So BOMS is a mouthful. It is vehicles operate in annual maximum service, and they are the number of vehicles the agency operates to meet the annual maximum service requirement, plus the annual service maximum requirement. No, maximum service requirements, sorry. Um, basically what we're asking is how many vehicles are on the road at one time at the peak season of the year, at the peak time. So of your 10 vehicles, how many how many vehicles are out at one exact time? That could be eight, could be nine, could be all 10. What we're asking is how many, how many are there? If you have 30 and you're saying 30 are out there and you only have 25,000 miles, we may ask you about it. Um, so this is something that we do look at just to try to get your service characteristics 
um, more known. So if you're having questions about your bonds, that's why. We're just trying to get a better look at exactly, you know, what your service consists of um, and how it compares to others. All right, so we're done with the data points that are mode and type of service for the actual service itself. Now we're going to switch gears over to financials. So another very, very important definition for NTD reporting is accrual accounting. So NTD reporting requirements for financial um, data generally follow accept, sorry, follow generally accepted accounting principles or GAAP in accrual accounting. If there are conflicts between GAAP and NTD reporting instructions and requirements, NTD rules are to be followed. In accrual accounting, the revenue is recorded when earned regardless of when payment is received. The expenses are recorded when the liability occurs regardless of when the payment is made. So you can see the details here and examples here for more detail. So if you have an employee, they receive a paycheck 10 days after the fiscal year ended. However, um, it was for work completed in the previous fiscal year. You would still count that next paycheck in your previous fiscal year because you where um, you incurred that liability already. And we'll go over a couple more examples of this. So also, when reporting your data to NTD, you report the actual funding that you spent, not what you were awarded. So for example, here, uh, you're awarded $275,000. However, you only drew down and spent that $178,000. On your NTD form, what we want to see is that amount that you spent, so that $178,000, in addition to any of the match that you had to spend in order to spend that $178,000, but this is just an example. Okay, so overall, cruel accounting, great. Funding spent, not earned, great. Now we're gonna jump into funding expense types. Operating expenses are the day-to-day -day expenses that a transit agency incurs, so these may be for operating and maintaining vehicles, maintaining other equipment, planning costs, admin costs, as well as the other examples seen here. Capital costs are related to the purchase of equipment. Equipment means an article of non-expendable personal property having a useful life of more than one year. The equipment will have an acquisition cost, which is equal to the lesser of the capitalization level established by the government unit for financial statement purposes, or $5,000, such as the vehicle seen here. So your agency may have a lower level of capitalization, which is fine, um, but usually for NTD reporting, it's $5,000. If it's anything under $5,000, we will ask your agency, what is your capitalization level? Why was this capitalized? And if you're saying $1,000 is our capitalization level, we'll say, thank you for the additional information. Issue is closed. Okay. So. There is operating and capital, and of course, there is capital assistance spent on operations. So this will happen when capital funding is spent on activities that are normally considered operating, such as preventative maintenance and the purchase of tires. So please make sure if you do receive this funding under like the 5310 or 5311 and I think other 50, chapter 53 type funding, uh, for federal funding, that you break this amount out from the operating expenses because this will be um, matched at a different rate, and we do look at match rates when we're looking at your overall forms. So it's an 80-20 match or 50-50 match. That could have a pretty big difference when we're looking at your forms. All right, so if your agency has more than or has two or more modes, the operating costs will be broken out between the modes based on direct and shared expenses. Once those are broken out, the shared expenses may be calculated between the modes based on the cost allocation method. So basically what we're saying, if you have a bus in a demand response mode, um, direct costs between these two modes should be separated out. If you have different vehicles, those different vehicle costs should be separated out. If you have different drivers, different driver costs should be separated out. Anything shared, like an admin person perhaps, that does both, um, they can be, their salary and fringe benefits, et cetera, can be uh, allocated between the two modes based on allocation factor or a method, um, if you do use an allocation method for those share costs, it should be the same method year to year. So if you're using VRM or VRH year to year, it should be exactly the same. So that way we can track your expenses by mode a little bit better. Okay, so fine, from finances, we're gonna go a quick overview of the TAM rule. So those that receive Chapter 53 funds and either own, operate, or manage capital assets used in providing public transportation services are required to report data for their assets. 
If you're receiving 5311 funding, you have historically reported assets. However, with the scam rule, more information is required now. So that was that A15, A35 that I talked about earlier. Uh, some of you may submit an A90 if you have your own TAM plan, so you may see that. However, if you are in your state's TAM plan, you will see it in a non-editable version below all of your other forms that you can review, but you cannot change or do anything to it. So, <clears throat> with regards to how the data is reported, for those in the sponsored state DOT plan, you'll report the assets associated with the plan. However, the targets in the narrative report will come from your state DOT. If you have your own report or your own TAM plan, uh, you will have your own E90 and you will have to submit your own uh, narrative report. As I mentioned in the previous slide, if you receive 5311 through a state DOT and are in their plan, you are considered a two, tier two agency and report as you have historically. So this data will be ultimately submitted by the state when the report is submitted. So really no, no huge change for you all that are in a state TAM plan with the submitting data. So capital responsibility, looping back to it, we're going to be mentioning capital responsibility with every asset form um, after the A10. So what it means is that here, agency owns the asset, it jointly owns the asset with another entity, and then for the note for a third bullet, an infrastructure asset itemized as a capital line item in the budget does not necessarily mean that an agency has direct capital responsibility for it. An agency must also have management or oversight responsibilities for the line item project. In addition, performing minimal preventative maintenance work doesn't necessarily indicate direct capital responsibility. It's a whole jumble of words. Basically, you have responsibility to replace the asset of any type probably a capital responsibility, but if you need further clarification, let us know. All right, please see here for a list of links to key reference documents included are the Glossary and Annual Reporting User Guide, as well as the USOA, that, which was updated last year. Um, so that was a full big overload update. It was mostly affected more of the full re urban reporters. Didn't really affect too much of the uh, role reporting thing. All right, so here are some additional links to the policy manual, which you'll want to select the reduced reporting policy manual in the TAM facility performance measure reporting guidebook if you have used for it. Again, you may not. If you have your own TAM plan, you probably will want to check this out at some point or if you haven't already. All right, so we're going to get into more definition review when we go through the forms with Courtney, but now we're going to get into NTD interface and user management review. I would like to go over what self-reporting means for subrecipients. If you are granted access from your state to be a self-reporting subrecipient, you will have the ability, ability to edit and save your data as well as validation answers. Self-reporting is completely optional and when, you have ac when the access is granted, the subrecipient or you will continue to reach out to the state DOT for technical assistance. If the state has additional questions, they will reach out to their assigned analyst on the NTD team or the um, help desk if, if needed. Usually, just going to reach out to their, their analyst. The analyst is going to have the most information on your state. That's how we usually say, go to your analyst. If your agency has chosen to become self-reporting, you'll need to fill out a user manager designation letter. Probably have already seen this. Not on the website. Um, you'll send it to the state. The state will forward it along to the analyst for processing. Uh, the user manager designation letter will need to be completed, printed on the agency letterhead, and signed by the director or CEO of the transit agency. After processing, the user will be sent an email advising them of the account creation and to set up their password. Okay, now to get into the system and how to report, the NTD homepage is found at www.transit.dot.gov forward slash NTD. This is where the data products, policy manuals, and a clickable link to go to the reporting system, among other items, are housed. After logging in and following the login instructions, which I'll go over in a moment, all users land on the newsfeed tab, which will have updates from our staff. The next task, or I'm sorry, the next tab is the task tab. Uh, tasks can be assigned between users as, as an agency. However, you may receive a task if you leave the form unsaved or incomplete midway through. So if you do have any, just check it out. Usually you can click on it, click close, no big deal. All right. So the majority of the time in the system for you all will be in the records tab. This is where you will find the package for RY19 and also the profile for your agency. We're going to go through the package in a moment with Courtney, but the profile will be where you will edit your mode, your agency's basic information, as well as view other agents, 
view other usage from your agency. These forms usually do not change year to year, so you may just go into it just to look at it. Might not have to change anything. Um, as a note for your modes, please do not enter an end date. Um, an end date will completely like wipe your mode for the next year if you put it as your, your fiscal year end date, if that makes sense. So if your mode is still going, it will continue to go. Leave the end date blank. If you stopped it halfway through the year, started something else up, that's when you can update that P20 um, under active mode size. Okay, the form library is found in the profile. This is where you see data from previous years that have been submitted to NTD. So this is a pretty important one. Uh, you will use the drop down <coughs> to select the package, then the link in blue for whichever form you want. So these will be downloaded in HTML format. So this is the form by form version. In addition to viewing the forms under related actions tab of the profile, you can print the previous year's full report package rather than form by form. So this will be by subrecipient. So if you're a state listening in, you cannot print all of your subrecipients at once at this time. Um, you'll have to print them uh, subrecipient by subrecipient, profile by profile. Another action you complete can complete on this form specifically is viewing and editing those profile forms I just spoke about briefly. So that basic information form where the name, the DUNS number, um, the federal ID number, website, all that information stored on the P10 mode form, exactly what it sounds like. That's where your modes are going to be. And the P30 form is going to be where you can review the users for your agency, but most of the user actions are going to be completed through the Actions tab underneath the yeah, Records tab. All right, so if you did choose to print out your entire package, uh, you will be taken to a new page where you'll click on the Refresh button until the link comes up for your, downloaded, your file to download. This could take a couple minutes, depending on how big your report is, how many people are in the system, what else is going on? So just keep clicking it, probably three minutes, I would say, maybe three to five. Uh, once the link is generated, it does generate kind of hidden, so we wanted to make sure we included this slide for you to see. So it's going to be under print annual forms and that view printable version of forms. So they will have the date as of when that you, you know, click that refresh button. And you'll just click on it, download it, print it, save it, whatever you need to do in it. Um, it will Look up here like it does in the system, so it's a very good guide to figure out you know, what you reported last year, what you should report this year, and kind of do a, a matching if you're not quite sure where to put something. A lot of people use it that way. All right, um, let's see here. To circle back into logging into the system now, you will first need to be a user. So to add users, each agency must have that user manager. Um, which I've already gone over, so just make sure that your user manager forms are filled out and they get sent in. So user managers will also fill that NTD role in case of the subrecipient editors, uh, which will be able to have uh, edit, save, and view data. Again, the state is the one that completely processes the rest of the report, so they're the ones submitting um, the final version of the report, but subrecipients individually on their own reports will be able to edit their own data. To reset your password, if you, so to back up, if you have a brand new link and go in, you're figuring out, okay, I need to set my password up, you're gonna actually click on the reset password button. Uh, so you're going to go to the reporting homepage, click on the request password reset, then fill out your user main, which will be your full email address, all or case. You'll receive an email with a link that is only active for 15 minutes. So once you receive that email, click on it, you can reset your password. Password needs to be at least 12 characters long, uppercase, lowercase, special character, and number. So it's a long one. So think it out. Make sure you write it down. If not, you can always use this function to reset your password as many times as you do. If you are already a user in the system and un need to unlock your account because there are, you have 60 days to log in before you get locked, um, there are two different ways to complete this. You can either unlock your own account if you have set up security questions, which we'll go over in the next slide, or you can submit an unlock request. If you submit an unlock request, the request will either go to the other user manager on the profile. If you have one, if you are the user manager, um, it will go to either, like I said, the other user manager or the entity team for processing. So it just kind of depends on how many people you have set up as user manager, who's doing what, what other users are out there. So. As I mentioned, if you have set up your security questions beforehand, you'll be able to unlock yourself. To set up your questions, go to the top right hand corner for logging in and select profile, then related actions. Questions. Follow the 
Okay, thank you, Bailey. Uh, now we will discuss how to complete the 2019 annual NTD report. So rural general public transit agencies, or RGPTs, commonly referred to, are agencies that provide rural service or benefit from 5311 funding. Um, this does not include agencies who also receive 5307 funding, nor does it include tribes. RGPTs must complete the forms that are listed on this slide, and we will overview each of these individual forms shortly. To begin working on the report, click on the reports tab, or the records tab rather, at the top of your page, and then select NTD report packages. Select your report package, which should read FY 2019 Rural Reporting, followed by your agency name. When you land on the Report Package Summary page, select the Annual Forms button in the top right-hand corner. You can select any form to begin. You are welcome to complete the forms in any order, but it may be more beneficial or at least easier to work from the top down. The B10 form reflects your agency's basic information. First, you will see your agency's organization type pre-populated from last year's report on this form. If the organization type needs to be updated for this year, please make this change in the form. Next, enter the fiscal year end date that corresponds with your NTD report data. This may be your agency's fiscal year end date, but if your fiscal year period is different from that of the state's, uh, please coordinate with your contact at the state DOT to determine how to report this value. And when you are finished, save and close the form. The A10 form reflects your agency's maintenance facilities, both in quantity as well as ownership type, facility type, and capacity. If a facility is used by more than one mode, report a prorated share of the facility based on the number of vehicles it services. You should not report maintenance facilities that are owned by third-party entities, such as a Jiffy Lube or a local body shop. For example, let's say a subrecipient operates demand response DR and motor bus MB service and owns one facility that services both modes. The subrecipient owns 20 vehicles in total. Uh, 15 of those vehicles are used for demand response and five vehicles are used for motor bus. How would they reflect this facility on their A10 forms? They would report 0.75 facilities on the DR A10 form since 15 out of the 20 vehicles are used for this mode. Um, and they would then report 0.25 facilities on the NB A10 form since five out of the 20 vehicles are used for this mode. Uh, please ensure that the sum of your prorated facilities always comes out to a whole number. The A15 form reflects your agency's facilities used for public transportation. Uh, this includes administrative and maintenance facilities for which your agency has capital replacement responsibility as well as passenger or parking facilities that are used in your agency's revenue service regardless of capital responsibility. Uh, some common types of facilities are administrative buildings, maintenance facilities, and combined administrative and maintenance facilities. If you reported facilities in the previous report year, these entries will populate in this year's report. Um, to report new facilities on the A15, select the Add Facility link at the bottom of the screen. Uh, this will allow you to enter the data in three sections. Uh, they are Facilities Information, Condition Assessment, and Address. And we will now review each section. In the Facilities Information section, enter the following information. Uh, we've got the name of the facility, the primary mode it services, as well as any secondary modes it may service, uh, whether the facility services a private mode, uh, the type of facility you are reporting, the year the facility was built or reconstructed as new, the square footage of the facility, 
And if the facility allows for parking um, for certain facility types, uh, the system will allow you to enter how many parking spaces the facility has. Uh, you must also report the percentage of capital replacement responsibility your agency has towards that facility, um, as well as if there are any notes you would like to add. Um, if you select certain other facility types um, or the combined administrative and maintenance facility type, uh, please enter a note explaining the functionality of that facility. And after entering all applicable data, click on continue. In the next section of the A15, report the condition assessment for the facility, which will be an integer value of 1 to 5, um, as well as the estimated date of the condition assessment, which could be when it was built or when it was reassessed. Uh, the name of the facility will carry over from the first section and the ID will be assigned once you save. And the last section is the address section. Um, again, the facility name will carry over from the first section, um, so then you can enter the full address of the facility. And when you are finished with all of these sections, click on continue. Um, upon clicking continue from this last section here, you will be sent back to the summary page of the A15, and from there you can save or save and validate or edit your facility by clicking on the name of the facility or checking off the radio button next to it and clicking on edit selected. The A30 form reflects your agency's revenue vehicle inventory. Your fleet information will pre-populate based on last year's report. Uh, the A30 form should reflect a snapshot of your agency's vehicle inventory as of the last day of your fiscal year period. Uh, if you need to add new fleets or edit any existing fleets, select the appropriate option. To add a new vehicle fleet, select Add Fleet and complete the data fields accordingly. If you have two or more vehicles that are identical across all characteristics, group the vehicles into fleets. The selection for automated or autonomous vehicles is new for Report Year 2019. After you enter the fleet's information, select Save and Validate on the A30 form. As a quick reminder, transit agencies are required to report the year the vehicle was manufactured or built not the vehicle's model year. Uh, manufacture year and model year typically differ, and correctly reporting the manufacture year will help determine the useful life benchmark of the vehicle fleet. Uh, transit agencies must also report the number of active vehicles in the fleet as of the last day of their fiscal year period. Um, active vehicles are vehicles that regularly provide revenue service or vehicles that are available to provide service, such as spares, backups, and vehicles that are temporarily out of service for routine maintenance. Um, but inactive vehicles cannot readily provide revenue service, as these include vehicles that have been taken out of service if they're awaiting sale, uh, vehicles that are in storage or, part of an, or are part of an FTA emergency contingency plan, or are vehicles that are out for long-term major repairs. A fleet should be marked as retired when the fleet has been sold or disposed of. When a fleet has been sold or disposed of, you should change active vehicles to zero, and the system will prompt a question that asks if the fleet is retired. Um, so select yes if the fleet is retired, or select no if the fleet is simply inactive but still owned by your agency. Um, you should not retire, I'm oh, sorry, you should not delete retired fleets from the report. Um, you should only delete a fleet from the A30 form if it's mistakenly included uh, or if you're removing a duplicate fleet after using the add existing fleet function. The A35 form reflects your agency's service vehicle inventory. Uh, you should only report the service vehicles for which your agency has capital replacement responsibility. Examples of service vehicles include cars used for administrative staff, uh, transit police cars, tow trucks, or service trucks. Service vehicles must be self-propelled and roadworthy, so agencies should not report small forklifts or golf carts or any other vehicle that does not meet these criteria. The A35 form should not include revenue vehicles. 
Uh, you are only required to complete one A35 form for your agency. This form is not mode specific like the A10 or the A30 forms. Uh, like the other asset forms, if you reported service vehicles in previous report years, the data will populate in this year's report. If you need to add a new service vehicle fleet, select Add Fleet and complete the information accordingly. Uh, service vehicle types include three selections. Um, there are automobiles, which include sedans and all other vehicles up to and including station wagons. Uh, trucks and other rubber tired vehicles include vehicles larger than station wagons. So those are your vans, your minivans, your pickup trucks, uh, and your SUVs. Uh, steel wheel vehicles are typically used for servicing rail modes and are a pretty rare selection for rural agencies, so we don't really expect to see many of those in the rural module. On the next page of the add fleet function, report the estimated cost to replace the fleet, which should represent a cumulative cost for the fleet. Report the year that corresponds to the dollar value you reported as the estimated cost. You must also report the transit agency capital responsibility for each service vehicle fleet. Once you have completed this, select continue followed by save and validate. The RR20 form reflects your agency's financial data, service data, volunteer data, and safety data. To begin reporting your financial data, First, enter your total annual operating expenses at the top of the form. If you operate more than one mode or type of service, you must report operating expenses that are specific to each mode. Um, in the remaining data elements on the RR20 form, you would report the individual sources of funds that contributed to your operating assistance. The system tallies your funding sources as you enter them so that when you're finished, the sum of your funding sources must match the value you entered as your annual total. Note that your agency's fair revenue expenses are counted as a contributing funding source towards the total. When reporting operating expenses for two or more modes, you are required to capture and report operating expenses from each mode separately rather than allocating your total operating expenses. And so to do this, you must first determine which expenses are direct expenses that are easily traced to one particular mode. After you have separated the direct costs, then you would determine which expenses are indirect or shared costs, which are not easily traceable to one mode. Uh, once you have identified the shared costs, you may then allocate them based on another data point, such as vehicle revenue miles, unlinked passenger trips, vehicle revenue hours, or number of employees. Report your agency's expenses from fair revenues. Fair revenues represent all income received and expended directly from passengers, including any donations that are made on board the vehicle. Donation-based fares should be reported as fair revenue. Passenger paid fares represent fares that passengers pay on their own behalf, including adult fares, senior citizen fares, student fares, child fares, or fares for individuals with disabilities. Organization paid fares are paid for by an organization rather than by a passenger. A common example of this is a university that pays a local transit agency to allow students and staff to ride fare free. Agencies that operate two or more modes are required to capture and report fares expended from each mode separately rather than allocating the total fare revenue. Um, an exception to this requirement may apply if your agency's fare policy involves a fixed fare for the initial segment of a multi-mode trip, and the transfer charge is not equal to the fare charged for a single ride trip on the next mode, or if a large portion of passengers use prepaid fare media that is accepted on all modes. In the event your agency's fare policy falls within these categories, please explain the circumstances to your analyst during validation. Other directly generated funds are funds other than fare revenues that your agency generates. These funds include advertising revenue, concession revenues, fundraisers, park and ride revenues, interest on investments, non-full cost contracts, donations, and insurance recoveries. If you report funds to this data element, 
please note that you will be required to provide a text description in the form. Revenues accrued through a purchase transportation agreement is a rare selection for rural agencies. You would report funds to this category if your agency is the seller of service in a qualifying purchase transportation agreement or a full cost contract. Your validation analyst will ask for clarification during validation in the event you report funds to this field. The non-federal funds section is where you report your agency's expenses from local funds, state funds, and other funds. Local funds include funds from tax levies, general funds, specified contributions, or finances from local entities. Uh, state funds include funds from state programs that support public transit, including the state portion of Medicaid funds. Um, if you do happen to report any funds to other funds, you will be required to provide a description in case the funds should be reported to another category. Next, report your agency's federal funding sources. Select all applicable checkboxes that correspond to the federal programs from which your agency expended funds during the fiscal year. When you select a checkbox, the subcategories of that program will populate in the form so you can report the expenses. If you report funds to an other category, such as other FTA funds or other federal funds, you must provide a, a text description of those funds. Here are some common examples of other funding types under the federal funds section. Other FTA funds are funds from a Federal Transit Administration program that is not already listed on the RR20, such as the FTA Clean Fuels program. Uh, other federal funds are funds from another federal program that's not already listed, such as Housing and Urban Development, Department of Health and Human Services, and Medicaid. Other US DOT funds are federal funds specifically from the Department of Transportation, including Federal Highway Administration funds. After you report your agency's financial data, report your resource data, service data, and safety data. The resources section is where you report your agency's volunteer drivers and personal vehicles in service, if applicable. The safety section is where you report any reportable safety incidents, as well as the number of fatalities or injuries that occurred as a result of those incidents, if applicable. If your agency does not have any volunteer or safety data to report, Ensure you enter zeros in these fields rather than leaving them blank. The service data section is where you report your agency's operating statistics for the year. If you operate more than one mode, report your agency's service by each mode and type of service. As a reminder, revenue service is when a vehicle is providing public transportation and is available to carry passengers. Uh, please also note that unlinked passenger trips should represent the total annual unlinked passenger trip value, including both your regular as well as sponsored trips. The A90 form, or Transit Asset Management Performance Measure Targets, is where an agency or an agency's group plan sponsor reports the portion of assets that have met or exceeded the asset's useful life benchmark. The form compares current year targets to actual data that is pulled from the current year's asset forms. For vehicles on the A30 and A35, the performance measure is determined by the vehicle's useful life benchmark. For facilities on the A15, the performance measure is determined by the facility's condition assessment. In most cases, the state reports this data on behalf of their managed and independent participants. The A90 form represents the plan for the cumulative group. Reporting challenges can take shape in a few different ways, such as understanding NTD's reporting policies, completing data entry in the report forms, accurately completing the report, and reviewing the validation issues associated with the report data. We will now overview these challenges and how to resolve them. NTD validates the data that agencies submit as part of their annual reports. This can include time series checks against previous year's data, logic checks between data items on different report forms, and verifying data that is reported for the first time in a particular report year, such as new modes and types of service or new funding sources. 
NTD also completes range checks for typical values found among transit agencies with similar operating characteristics. When NTD validation analysts have questions about the data you have submitted, you may revise the data to reflect accurate information if the data requires a correction, or you may provide a detailed explanation for the data if the data are correct as reported. As a reminder, if an agency operates more than one mode and type of service, the agency should determine which costs or direct costs that are attributable to a particular mode and type of service and which expenses are shared costs that cannot easily be traced to one mode. The agency should then trace or allocate shared costs to each mode, type of service, and function. Common allocation variables include but are not limited to vehicle hours and miles, vehicles operated in annual maximum service, number of employees, direct expenses, and ridership. Agencies must report all funds used to support their public transit operations, not just their federal sources. The NTD reporting platform accounts for year-to-year -year funding changes in an agency's report. This checks whether funding sources have been reported consistently, such as local funds, state funds, other directly generated funds, and 5311 funds. Certain data element fields have been consolidated between 2017 and 2018, such as donations being moved to other directly generated funds and contract revenue being moved to either other directly generated funds or revenues accrued through a PT agreement, excuse me, depending on the nature of the contract. A key component to understanding NPD reporting is understanding what constitutes revenue service. Revenue statistics on the NTD report must always exclude deadhead. Deadhead can be defined as when transit vehicles are operating closed door and do not carry passengers. Deadhead includes the miles and hours spent leaving or returning to the garage or yard facility uh, to or from the start or ending point of revenue service. This also includes miles and hours spent changing routes during the day or generally whenever the vehicle does not have the duty to carry passengers. Vehicle revenue miles is an apportionment formula factor for the 5311 program, so this data is validated very closely. Vehicles operated in annual maximum service, or VOMS, represents the number of revenue vehicles an agency operates to meet the annual maximum service requirement. This includes volunteer vehicles operating during peak service. It excludes atypical days or one-time special events for non-demand response modes. Bombs should be a snapshot of the peak day and not an all-day account. Capital expenses are the expenses that are related to purchasing a capital asset or making an improvement to a capital asset that materially increases its value or useful life. Capital expenses include the acquisition cost of a capital asset, including the cost of delivery or installation or any modifications made to the asset. Agencies might report just the new vehicle or just the capital expenditure, but not both, during the report year. This would be brought up in validation by your analyst for more information. If your agency operates more than one mode, the agency would need to report a capital expense to just one mode based on predominant use rather than allocating the cost of the asset between two modes. When agencies update their revenue vehicle inventory year over year, they must ensure the data meets NTD requirements. All transit agencies reporting service data must provide information on their revenue vehicles by mode and type of service. This includes inventorying all vehicles they use to provide public transportation that have not been sold or disposed of at the end of the fiscal year period. This includes vehicles currently in operation, vehicles awaiting sale or disposal, vehicles out for long-term repair, vehicles in storage, or vehicles retained as part of an FTA-approved emergency contingency plan. Vehicles must be reported on the first fiscal year in which they become available for revenue service. Some common issues on the A30 form include agencies reporting the model year of a vehicle rather than the manufacturer year, agencies deleting a fleet rather than retiring it, or not updating vehicle fleets year to year with retired vehicles.
When agencies submit reports to the NTD, their assigned validation analyst will evaluate the report for any deviations from reporting requirements, missing data, and data irregularities. This can include significant data fluctuations from the previous report year, uh, it could include report forms that have not been completed, or it could include reporting data to the incorrect field. Agencies can assist in the validation process by providing detailed responses about their operating environment or any changes from the previous report year. Agencies should avoid providing vague, general responses to validation, such as data is correct. Rather, agencies should explain the changes to their service that caused data change, including changes to routes, any personnel changes, um, or changes to the agency's funding sources. For example, let's say an agency reports a bus as being 35 feet long in year one. The agency then updates the fleet details to 25 feet in year two. A validation check would fire for this change as vehicles typically do not change length year over year. There are two primary possibilities for this change. One is that the data was reported incorrectly in year one and was corrected in year two. If this is the case, the agency would provide a response explaining the prior year error and current year correction. Another possibility is that the data was erroneously updated in year two and that the year one value was correct. In this case, the agency would revise the data in the report to reflect the correct vehicle length. After an agency submits a report, their assigned validation analyst reviews and validates the report and sends it back to the agency for revisions afterwards. All agencies can expect to have their report sent back at least once. Each time the report is sent back for revisions, the timetable for the agency to make corrections and resubmit the report is shortened. Be sure to address and correct all issues cited in the previous year's closeout letter or items noted by your analyst. Any issues that are not resolved from the prior year's report may be marked as questionable. The report package summary page shows the validation dashboard, which indicates how many open issues and total issues each form has. In this example, the A30 form has six open issues and six total issues. Each report form has two save options, save or save and validate. The save button simply retains your progress in the form if you would like to complete the form at a later time. The Save and Validate button should only be selected when the form is complete and you are ready for the system to apply validation to your data. If you save and validate a form but later make changes to the data, you must save and validate again. If you save a form that has already been validated, the form will revert from green, meaning validated, back to red, meaning not validated, on the summary dashboard. The form will not turn green again until you reselect Save and Validate. You may view your form's validation issues through two primary ways. Uh, one is to open a report form, navigate to the bottom of that form, and select View Issues. This will allow you to view the issues only for that one particular form. Another option is to open your report package summary page and select View Issues in the top right-hand corner. Uh, this will open all validation issues on your entire report rather than for one form. When viewing validation issues, you may select an issue by clicking anywhere on the issue row once. Uh, this will highlight the row as seen in this screenshot. Scrolling down after selecting an issue will pull up the comment box for that issue, where you may enter your explanation to the check if applicable. Reports must be complete when submitted to the NTD. A report may be considered incomplete if the report does not conform with NTD definitions, accounting principles, or accrual accounting. If the report fails to include accurate responses to all validation checks. If the report includes responses that have been copied and pasted from previous revisions rather than addressing any new or follow-up inquiries. Or if a report does not reflect any requested data changes. If a report is incomplete by the closeout period, FTA cites the issues in the agency's closeout letter. 
To accurately resolve reporting issues and ensure that the report is complete, agencies must provide a thorough and detailed explanation to each validation issue. Be sure to provide enough information to give your analyst a clear picture of your agency's service, including any changes to your service year over year. It is helpful to provide as much detail as possible, even if the details may seem insignificant. In the event that last year's data was incorrect, please explain how the data should have been reported, um, how it was reported incorrectly in the prior year, or why this year's data is correct. Agencies are encouraged to take advantage of the resources provided by NTD, including pre-submission calls, agency checklists, published webinars, and training guides. Uh, your state's analyst is here to help. Um, be sure to contact the state DOT if you have any questions or concerns at any point during the report year and the state DOT will reach out to the analysts accordingly um, if the state contact is unsure of how to help. Um, so thank you everybody for tuning into this presentation. Um, again, if you have any questions about this material or about your 2019 report, um, please again reach out to your contact at the state DOT. Uh, if your state is unsure of how to provide assistance, they will then reach out to the state's assigned validation analyst. Um, thank you again for both of us and we will now open up for questions. Yes, so uh, no questions came in during the presentation, but if you have one now, you can feel free to start typing it in the Q&A box, and we'll wait a couple of seconds, minutes, um, and see if anybody has any questions. Okay. Yeah, if no one has any questions, then we're good. Just feel free to reach out to the state. State can reach out to us. Will the slides be online? Uh, you, the presentation will be made available online through the NT YouTube. NTI YouTube, correctly. <laughs> yes, um, it uh, maybe probably by next week. I have to uh, do some editing and get it uploaded. Oh, uh, Deidre Hughes has a question. Medicaid is non-federal funds, correct? Uh, it depends on whether or not what type of Medicaid it is. So it's either non-federal uh, funds or state funds, depending on the original source of those Medicaid funds. Um, I'm going to go back to Brody's question for a second. If he actually. I'm assuming Brody's a he. I'm sorry if yes. not. I can't tell. Yep. Um, if Brody actually wants the slides themselves, the PowerPoint slides, that's not usually available, but the handouts are a sort of truncated version Correct. of the slides. I'm not sure uh, what you meant. So the recorded presentation will be on NTI's YouTube page probably by next week, and you can download the handouts, which are two up slides from the presentation uh, with the link pasted in the chat box. Hope that covers everything. Um, Bailey, Courtney, do you do you usually provide the slides to people? I don't I don't think you do, but we usually don't. However, uh, we may be posting them to the NTD website, um, depending on whether or not we can get approval for it. So I would go ahead, Brody, and just download it from the handouts, like uh, Glory was saying, uh, just to get that immediately, because it would be something that we'd have to get the okay from, as well as go through uh, compliance. So just go ahead, download them now, and we'll try to get them up for others. However, it could take a little bit of time. Okay, that's, that's helpful. Anybody else? No? I know people have to type and I, I just feel weird sitting here with this, you know, just dead air. So, <laughs> um, well, I guess if anyone does have any questions, uh, use the email addresses. They show up in the last, uh, the last slide of the handouts, which hopefully you grabbed. You can always uh, email uh, us at NTI and we can resend that to you if for some reason you don't have them. I guess if that's it then, which it appears to be, uh, we'll wish everybody a good afternoon, and uh, oh, as a reminder, you will be getting a survey about this presentation. Please take a few minutes and fill out that out for us. We really appreciate your input. Now, uh, have a great Tuesday afternoon, everybody. Bye.